Oh my Yay! goodness. <laughs> oh. Yes. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? How are you, ladies and gents and folks and people? Um, I told you guys I was going to have a guest, and here she is in all her glory. <laughs> so, Sean, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, guys. So good to meet everybody, and I hope to see you all soon. I'm Shama Danani. I'm a hypno soul coach, and I help you overcome that second guessing, procrastination, the doubt, and move into clarity and confident action. So I'm really excited that we're here chatting. Yes, uh, I'm so excited. And for those of you who um, might not know me that are perhaps watching this after the Facebook Live, I'm Carly Myers. And what I do is I help people who are feeling stuck in their life and career get their mojo back, build a life that feels like home, um, AKA I help people uh, make adulting fun. Um, I love so, that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's gotta be fun. I mean, we're spending our entire life adulting. So, um, so you know, I really wanted to talk, you know, we wanted to talk today about, you know, feeling like we're just getting pushed lower and lower on the, the priority list. Um, and tell, you know, tell a little story and maybe a few stories and <laughs> um, just create a conversation around this and what it means and how we can put ourselves first um, and not in a selfish way, not in a sabotaging way, just in a way that serves not only you, but everyone around you. So, Shama, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, and I just want to add to that, as you said that, Carly, I just thought it's not even, you know, a me versus others they're more important or I'm more important it's even like prioritizing myself versus my own to-do list yeah like I need to be on my to-do list I need to do a bubble bath <laughs> yeah it needs to be like for me I'm a huge calendar person it, if it's not in the calendar it's not happening yeah so like my you know we were just talking about this beforehand we're like we both want to go to eight o'clock yoga it is it's in the calendar it's happening and that is that is part of the prioritization. Um, so perhaps we could start with, you know, just some some context about what it is that you're what is that you do on a deeper level and uh, maybe like a, a personal story as to what, you know, how does this come up in your own life? Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Start so, <laughs> uh, you know, I know this isn't new news, um, but being so busy, like everything in our world is so super fast. Everything is like at Google or Facebook pace. And honestly, our bodies are not made for Google and Facebook pace. Um, so I know for me, because I like to be really on top of things and I like to keep up with the demands that are out there because it just it energizes me to some degree. So some of me likes it. Um, but the part of me that really doesn't like that, like when I have a list that goes on and on and on forever, by the way, guys, when has our to-do list ever ended? It never happens. It's really almost never going to. It's not a thing. So that's going to go on anyway. So striving to eliminate something that's going to continue on forever is kind of like redundant in itself. Like, why bother? Um, but, you know, like everybody else, I found myself doing just that. And especially around the holidays, there was also a lot of socializing going on. So I was like doing my to-do list, going to holiday parties. And I have a birthday at the end of the year, so I was trying to figure that out, too, and make time for me to have fun. Um, and you would think it was my birthday. I would have carved out some time to chillax. But what I found was trying to keep up with everything and not really reprioritizing and minimizing a lot of my to-do list to make space for the socializing, I was burning out. And I got to a point where there was something that I really wanted to go to, and I just couldn't make it. I physically couldn't go. Um, so I got sick. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Carly, this has happened to you too. I know it. Uh, don't throw me under the bus here. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten sick and it's not the first time. And this time it was pretty bad. So I really couldn't go anywhere. Sometimes it's like, I have a little sore throat or I don't feel so great. I'm still going to push myself through. And even that's not really ideal. Um, and what I did was, first of all, I had to acknowledge that that's what I was doing. Um, and then really just, Make myself a priority, but set up tools and practices to help me not go back there, really. And one of the ways that I did it, because I'm a hypnotist, I hypnotize myself. And that helps because when we hypnotize ourselves or we do deep meditation or something along those lines, 
our body's in homeostasis, so it's calm, it's relaxed. So from that calm and relaxed place, I can make better decisions. I'm not drained, I'm not trying to keep up with a list that constantly feels like it's dragging me along. So when I started doing that more actively, I realized that I can bring it back and I can get actually more, more done than I thought I was doing before because I'm no longer feeling the stress and the tension of my body. That's not weighing on my body and my body's not getting tired to where my body was slowing me down anymore. It was keeping up with my pace because I was doing it in a very relaxed way. So I actually could get about the same amount done and have amazing life experiences just by reducing the stress, by changing the way I physically and emotionally approach my work. Yeah, and for those of us who don't know what homeostasis is or hypnosis, can you give us a little context here? Because I know this is gonna be new to a lot of oh, people yeah. that follow me, yeah. Totally, okay, so um, I'll start with hypnosis because that's what I do. Um, hypnosis is meditation with a goal. That's what we like to describe it as because what you're doing is you're using the same processes or similar processes as meditation, but we're focusing in and on a specific outcome that you want. And when you do that, all of your resources are focused on that. And when you do it in a subconscious place, your ego, the part that's always like, no, 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 is kind of sitting in the backseat of the car and your subconscious is driving and your subconscious determines and influences 95% of the actions you take in life and what you actually do in your life. So when you're doing this in hypnosis, you're talking to that part of you that's actually the one in charge. It's someone calling the shots. Whether your ego knows it or not, your subconscious calls the shots. And I'm truncating it down to really simplify it, but science has proven all of this. Um, hypnosis is a very scientific method. Homeostasis is when your body is in a very relaxed place. It is the opposite of fight or flight. So fight or flight is when you're feeling worry, when you're feeling stress, when you're feeling anxiety, when you're feeling overwhelmed. Your body feels that tension. You're always like this. Maybe you're slouched. Um, maybe you just feel yourself tense. If you're sleeping at night, you wake up with headaches. You could be tensing your mouth or, you know, just tensing in your body and you're not very loose and comfortable and flowy. That's when you're in or activating those states of fight or flight. And when you're in those places, you literally go into a tunnel vision. You can't see the possibilities that are expanded outside of you and the options you may actually have. You just see the one that you thought you had and you get stuck on it. Whether you can get through it or not, you get stuck there. So when you go into homeostasis, you're in the opposite of that. You're in a relaxed state of mind where your body is relaxed, your mind is more relaxed, you're actually able to see the possibilities in front of you and explore those instead of getting stuck on that one tunnel vision place. So I hope that explained it. Yeah, yeah, and what's interesting is that, you know, I like to tell people a lot is that even like something as simple as a trip to the grocery store, right, or like, um, Something very simple uh, as a conversation or just a word can put us in this fight or flight state. And that's our subconscious. That's not that's not our ego. That's not, you know, what's controlling everything. So um, and I always like to point out that it's uh, what's interesting is that we, you know, the subconscious is kind of responding as if it was like the in, an initial traumatic experience, like a car accident. Yeah or you know something like that and literally it's just a word or a trip to the grocery store or whatever and if we're going to go in and we're addressing this i always like to pretend like it's like back here you the know amygdala. yeah the amygdala. it's back there it is back there yes. the amygdala is at the back of back um almost at the base of your neck at the spot where the bottom of your head is yeah yes okay so my intuition was right there yeah. um <laughs> and we've got the expert here to tell us thank goodness um <laughs> And so, you know, that we get a little bit more control there. And yeah. I think that's a really, really great example. And um, what's funny about you, you're talking about the to-do list and your birthday and, you know, all of this. And I had a similar experience where um, during my birthday, I was like, mm -mm, no, we're going to do we're going to do everything for my birthday. And hence, I like to call it like the birthday disaster of 2017. Like it happened a few months ago. and. Um, I found that I was like, I, my birthday came along and I was like, I'm turning 25. Oh my God. You know, like, here's like, here's a, you know, age where it's, everything's, you know, it's, it's supposed to matter. Um, and, and really it, I got to the point where I was like, why are, you know, I haven't, why aren't my friends throwing me a party? Why isn't anybody doing all this? I got, I went into like, yeah, Shama hasn't even heard this story, right? I like went into this, like this place of like, 
nobody loves me. Like, nobody wants to throw me a party. No one's going to blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, you always, you never. And, um, and at the time, <laughs> I saw a Facebook post of someone who's like, if you want, you know, if you want someone to throw you, want someone to love you a certain way, um, uh, something around, like, lo love. Um, and I was like, damn right, I'm going to throw myself a birthday party. I can't tell you. It, like, birthday disaster of 2017. I had spent all, you know, all of the, like, month or two before that, you know, serving, serving, serving. Just on the phone constantly, giving people, you know, helping people, going out to a vet speaking event, going out to this event, going out to that event, doing the parties for friends. You know, um, I I was now in a relationship, but I was like, oh my gosh, managing a relationship, managing all of these things, everything's going on, day job, you know, everything. And came to my birthday and it all, you know, all came to head to the I'm really bad at things, came, you know, came to a head and um where I was like, no, I deserve a birthday. I deserve this. You know, I was so entitled and so mm. it was so bad. And this is what happens when we put ourselves, you know, lower on the priority list. Um, we end up in a place where we are in such scarcity for love, for connection, for, you know, all of these things where we become entitled because it is like fight or flight, right? For, for the things that we are basic emotional needs. Um, and so like, you know, I had, I, my friends can vouch for this. If any of my friends are watching this, you can be like, yes, birthday disaster of 2017. Um, we, we had to sit down and we had to have a serious conversation about what the hell was going on. You know, mm. Carly, why are you acting like this? You know, we care about you, you know, X, Y, and Z. And when it boiled down to it, it was, I was giving from an empty cup. Um, mm. and so any of you guys know the saying, you can like give me like the little hands up emoji um, about, you know, filling your cup before you pour it into those of others. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I'm not a huge fan of the cup analogy because the cup analogy implies that you only refill it every once in a while. And up until my, this birthday disaster, I was living my life where you know, I only needed to stop once every few months for like a massage or take a day off every few weeks, you know, mm. and my cup, I was running on empty. And so, you know, putting yourself higher on the priority, on the list of priorities, on your calendar, on your to-do list, all, all of this stuff, it means kind of envisioning your life as a funnel. Um, whereas, you, you know, your cup, it, it's not a cup, it's a funnel and it's continually, you know, things are coming in and going out. So if you're not taking care of yourself continuously, then you're going to run on dry. Then you're going to become, you know, you could be like me. You could become angry and entitled or resentful, right? Or you could be, um, you could get sick. Um, yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of different things that, yeah. So you said birthday and I was like, yes, this horror, you know, the birthday disaster of 2017. Um, and then that's where I started saying, okay, lost Sundays. That's my thing. You know, you I don't do any work on Sundays at all. I love Sundays. that. Sloth Sundays? Sloth Sundays. It's a thing. Um, I want to adopt that. Yeah. My my partner does not call it Sloth Sundays. He's like, I'm not going to call it that. You know, out he tells his clients it's significant other Sunday. But I'm like, Sloth Sundays, I'm not doing anything. Um, you know, I did that. And then I and I cut off my appointment time. So I said, OK, uh, you know, I don't take appointments after certain such and such times. Um, and so I created boundaries, put the self-care in the calendar. I did all of that to put myself higher on the priority list. It sounds like you also got clear on what timing works for you, right? Because if you know you have to cut off your work at a certain time, mm. you're only functioning really well before that time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I did that, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's because, you know, I don't know how everybody else's bodies tend to work, but, you know, I'm getting up at, you know, six, sometimes five in the morning, nine, at, like 930 at night, not going to be a good time for me to work. Not no. at all. I, my body is shutting down 100 percent. Yeah. I have yeah. to cut off by eight, 830 because then I'm fried. I can't after that. Yeah. I'm just like I turn into a zombie. So what is <laughs> So what are the tools or tips that you would give, you know, some of the people that are watching? Yeah. Or, 
for putting themselves first? Um, I would say, first of all, I would say permission. You have permission to put yourself first because if you don't, no one else is going to do it for you. And equally important is it's not just permission. It's your responsibility to put yourself first. And I think as especially as women, we were taught to be more nurturing. It's just a natural instincts anyway. Right. But we witnessed women nurture others so much that that's the example that we learn from. And I know for me and all of my friends, we didn't watch our moms take care of themselves as much. And that set the example for us. And so it's not what helped them. They didn't, you know, they did it. They did it well, probably. Um, but it didn't help them sustain themselves because they burnt out over and over and over again. And while we've done the same things and we've experienced the crash and burns many, many, many times, we don't have to keep doing it. We can stop that pattern. So I would say permission is really important in that you don't have to live the same life as the ones that we were learning from. We can live different lives. Um, and the practical tools of it, obviously, I'm going to suggest hypnosis because I know it's been such a huge process for me. But one of the things that I feel has really helped me stay focused in that and not let that fight or flight take over has also been a morning meditation practice. So I can start off my day in stillness instead of start it off in constant go. That has helped me stay grounded. And then I do hypnosis throughout my day um, and really taking care of your body. Like Carly said, it, you know, prioritizing me time every month. I actually have it on my schedule. I have a spa day and a relaxation day on my schedule every single month. Am I going to go to the spa every single month? Maybe not. But that's a symbolic schedule representation of taking that time to do something just for me. So yeah. planning it, plan it in there, advance, and then switch it up for something else you really want to do, but have it in there so you're nurturing yourself. And it's the funnel. Like, Carly, I love that analogy. It's the funnel of self-care, not just the filling the cup. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. You know, I, I'm i a huge you know, supporter of, you know, the ways you're going to reward yourself for all of your hard work. You know, there's the reward part too. I'm definitely one of those people that uh, very dedicated, very, you know, go, go, go. And um, forcing myself to say, okay, here's your reward. There's not, you're not just chasing the abyss. You're not, you're not just chasing anything. And yeah. so, you know, I also, you know, I also do that thing where I block off time on my calendar to do stuff, but it, you know, I have something blocked off. I actually think it's next Friday. I'm going, this is my, my kind of me time. I'm going to go um, to the public library. I'm going to sign out a book on poetry and songwriting, and I'm going to spend an evening writing songs. I am Ooh. not a musician, not a musician, but it is something that is going to fuel my soul. It's going to make me feel silly and fun. And um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, for those of you who are thinking, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if I could go get a massage every week or, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be that. I'm going to the free library, you know, getting a book and spending some time with me being silly, being creative, enjoying, you know, what it, what it is that's like that one little idea that pops up, you know, yeah. whatever that is for you. Maybe it's a, you know, a brownie recipe popped up right now, like a new gluten-free brownie Dance recipe. Class. Dance class. Oh, my gosh. I just went to a um, shaman. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Pound Fitness. No. No. Okay. It is a weighted drumstick class. Shout out to Gab if she's watching this. I went with her. Um, it's weighted drumsticks, and you dance with weighted drumsticks, and you're pounding the floor, and you're pounding the drumsticks, and you're doing it to the beat of the song. It is so much fun. And that's something that, like, I did on, on Friday, and it completely fueled my soul. I was so revitalized, so ready you know, for all of my Saturday morning appointments. And of course I was like laughing the whole way through. Cause I was like, what am I doing right now? Yeah. I love that. I think I want to um, find if we have that in New York, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It's super fun. It's really yeah. fun. So um, for those of you who do you think now's a good time to share what we're kind of. Yes. Cause you said New York and I want to tell them what we're doing in New York, but I, okay. I, wanted, I don't want to jump the gun. So yeah, I know we're like, Oh. Um, <laughs> so Sean and I actually partnered up to bring you guys something really, really exciting. I'm, I'm so stoked about it. Um, we've been on the phone for the last what couple months planning it. <laughs> and um, what, we, what we're bringing to you guys is a, a three-hour workshop to really help you put yourself first, 
you know, manage that to-do list so you're not feeling overwhelmed and overworked. Um, getting yourself out of the, I'm too tired, I'm too old, I'm, you know, I'm too overwhelmed. And um, so we're doing a workshop here in Philadelphia and one in Philly as well. Um, I'm going to let Shama tell you a little bit about it too. Yeah, so um, it's going to be really exciting because you're going to get to do hands-on stuff. You're going to be working. I, I don't want to give away too much detail, but we will be doing hands-on work. So for those of you who are very tactile, this is going to be really, really nice. Um, and you're also going to experience, obviously, hypnosis. So you're going to have a lot of opportunities to get tools to get clear on what it is that you even want to begin with. Right. Because some of us have been working so much that it's like, um, stop this for what? I don't even know what I want. So um, that can help you get clear on what it is you want. And we're going to be doing a moving meditation with Carly, we're gonna be doing hypnosis to forgive some of the stuff you've been doing in the past and really like free yourself up and open up so you can move forward to create those new patterns of what you wanna do going forward. So you can actually succeed at it rather than just have a hypothetical idea or rather than just walk out and be like, I would like to. No, you're gonna actually be doing it. So that's our goal, to make sure that you leave there doing what it is you want it to be doing or setting it up to be done. Yeah, setting yourself up for success. Um, yeah. I think that's really important. And I, I love, you know, when I'm working with people in my workshops, and I'm sure some of you have been there, it's really about, okay, this is what I say I want, but this is this is what I actually want. And we really differentiate between, you know, the, the thing we say, we've trained ourselves to say that we want constantly, and then really dig down and figure out what it is that we actually want and create yeah. actionable steps and uh, without the resistance to move forward to achieve that. So um, it's going to be really, really fun. Like Shama said, it's going to be on my end, a moving meditation, and it does involve salt. So uh, for those of you who know me and my my obsession with salt, it's going to be really fun, really tactile, um, and definitely an experience not to miss. So we have the date, right? So the mm -hmm. February 25th. It's a is Sunday is a Sunday that's going to be in New York. That's 1130 to 230 and um, February 26th here in Philly. And that's going to be from 6 to 9 p.m. right here in center. Well, right here in Center City, Philadelphia um, at make offices. So it's going to be a blast and we will post a link. I just realized we didn't post a link. We're going to post a link to both of them. So if you're in your you're in New York, you can click that you're going to be in Philly. We will have you. We will have tons of fun. And if you have friends um, yeah. in either place, share with them. This is a really great thing to, and I just want to add on to that, a really great thing for those of you who are, you know, you made New Year's resolutions. It's now the end of January. Either you're still barely, you're hanging in by like, by your last, you know, last little string of something to your New Year's resolutions, or you've already kind of fallen, fallen off the bandwagon. I think this is a really, really great time to step back in, reevaluate, say, okay, what is, is this New Year's resolution in alignment with me? And if so, how can this workshop, you know, this workshop can help keep you on the right track for the rest of the year. Totally. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, Shauna, it was so great having you. Um, thank as you. A special guest. Yes, and um, thank you. We will see you here in Philly in a few weeks. Awesome. Thanks, Carly. Bye, everybody. Bye.